and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you live from beautiful Budapest here in Central Europe. I hope everybody has had a great week so far. In this class, we are looking at the reading section. We will cover some strategies and uh, practice together reading and answering. Now it is reading, so make sure to read with me in this class. Uh, while we wait for some more of your fellow students to join in, this lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Check us out there. And for the general version of the test, do check us out at g-i-e-l-t-s-help.com. On both of those websites, we have loads of fantastic materials for you, ranging from video lessons to practice exams to interactive courses with effective and proven strategies to get high band scores. Hi, Kiran. Hi, Pavan, Jaspreet, and Mahesh. Uh, Yuru, good to see many of our members in the class. Michael Fan, Darshan, nice to see lots of students. Aisa joining in. Yura, correction, sorry about that. Um, all right, students, uh, again, these lessons are presented to you by aehelp.com. For this website, look for the blue background, click that big red button to join the premium package. For the general version, check out this website with the green background, click that big red button to join the premium package there. Spend a couple dollars, save yourself a lot of time, headache, not having to reset the IELTS exam over and over and over again. Uh, students, if you have questions about our products or about the exam, send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com. I will gladly answer your inquiries as best I can. Uh, tomorrow we will finish task two with our members and do a task one uh, line graph class for everyone. And then on Saturday, some more uh, IELTS speaking part two, part three classes. And again, loads of materials and videos on our website. So check us out there. Uh, students, let's get into today's reading. Here we go. This is reading passage one from our first exam. And uh, here you see a pretty little picture and the title, Mountains of Ice. Okay, fantastic. Always look at the picture. When you see the picture, remember to visualize. Humans are visual beings. How do we know that? Because this back part of our brain concentrates on visual processing. Okay, so here's our brain. Okay, this is a quick drawing of our brain. Um, here we have some areas for hearing and for speaking, communication. Here we have some areas on our brain. Here's the eyeball if you're trying to figure out what I'm drawing here. This is a side view of your brain. Uh, here we have some uh, areas here for uh, the sensation of touch, controlling our muscles. No, this is not a biology class. I just want to convince you to visualize and see information when you read. Uh, this back part of our brain, this whole beautiful part here, in fact, it has its own name called the occipital lobe. Ocular occipital lobe, meaning visualization. This is all for your eyeballs information and processing. It is highly dominant in humans. Okay, we traded our smell, our taste, our touch, a lot of those abilities for eyes so that we can see. So make sure to see information. That's why the IELTS often gives you these nice pictures at the beginning because they want to remind you, hey, visualize, it will help you, okay? So here you're looking at a mountain of ice, also known as an iceberg. And then based on that title, you want to do a little bit of prediction, a little bit of critical thinking. So um, you want to ask yourself some questions. 
Like, uh, what is an iceberg or what is a mountain of ice? Can anybody answer that for me? So what is an iceberg? What is an iceberg or mountain of ice? What is that? In your own words, the better your answers, the better uh, you will do on the reading passage. Okay? So be clear, be accurate, see it. Try to think of movies maybe where you've seen uh, icebergs or books. Okay, Sue says it's a solid piece of ice. You mean like an ice cube, Sue, like in my refrigerator? Because that's a solid piece of ice. Okay, Spaceman Space says it's a big piece of ice in the cold weather. Tunde says, Adeyemi says, in simple terms, it's frozen water. It's more than that. It's frozen salt water. Okay. So it's an iceberg. Mm, I would say it is a massive chunk of frozen water floating in the ocean. That's what I would say. Yeah, so I can't read the Cyrillic, but I'm going to try to learn some Cyrillic here. Um, it says, an iceberg is a big piece of ice in the sea. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Relish Babu says, it's a pile of frozen salt water floating in water. Very good. All right. Um, why? Why do we have these? Okay. So why do we have icebergs? in the ocean give me an answer for that one okay again these what why hows you have to do it because when you have some good answers you're going to understand the passage much more and the questions as well okay mom and Nasser says it's a huge ice cube like the one in my fridge just in the ocean right mohammed Haman says it's a massive mass of ice floating in water found usually in Arctic areas. Very good, Haman. Yeah, the Arctic, meaning the North and South Poles. Okay. Uh, so why do we have icebergs in the ocean? Harpreet says due to global warming, the ice is melting. Okay, sure. So global warming, the ice is melting and breaking apart then floating okay sure so sue not extreme temperature drop but extreme temperature increase right climate change all right yeah so how does it happen How does it happen? Amira Hamed says, sometimes we don't have an answer for why. That's okay, Amira. Just do your best and then go on with the reading. The important point is to take time and attempt to answer these questions. Hi, Kiran. Hi, Ravindra. Ravindra, one of our new members. All right, awesome. Um, so how does this happen? How does this ice formation of these icebergs happen what happens hopefully you're thinking the same okay large pieces of ice break away from glaciers in the north and south arctic and then float out to sea all right, so large pieces of ice break away from glaciers in the North and South Arctic, then float out to sea. As much as you can, students, so that you are visualizing this, okay? All right, uh, now, good, we've visualized, we've thought about this, icebergs, there's that chunk of ice. Now we look at the questions. 
Oh, questions one to five. Do the following statements agree with the claims of the writer in reading passage one? Yes, no, not given. You should A, not read these before the passage, and B, not skim read for these, okay? So yes, no, not given, or true, false, not given strategy. Given or true, false, not given strategy. Point number one, do not read these before the passage as false and not given information is confusing for the non-linear human mind. Non-linear means that your mind doesn't think in a one, two, three, four, five sequence in a line. It's not a computer, okay? The mind jumps around like a spider web. Uh, so if you read information that's not in the passage or that's false, it's going to confuse your brain when you are reading the passage. So uh, don't read these before the passage. Number two, uh, skimming or scanning, it's the same thing, I don't know why we keep saying both, uh, is an ineffective, ineffective meaning not effective, uh, strategy because you cannot search for information which is not given. It wastes way too much time. Okay, so don't do that, all right? You can't do that. So no skimming, no scanning. You can't scan if it's not given. You're going to go through the whole passage to only realize that maybe it's not given, especially because it's paraphrased. Okay, so we skip that one. All right, so we skip it. Then we have questions six to nine. Complete the summary below. Mm -hmm. Okay, the sinking of the Titanic. Summary completion type questions. We'll come back to yes, no, not given. So summary completion type strategy. Uh, number one, read these before the passage as all information is contained in the passage. Also, it is a paraphrase of the passage, so it will help you understand a part of the passage. These questions come from one or a couple of paragraphs. So pay attention. All right. So let's read this one together, okay? Let's read this one together. Jaspreet Kaur says, I love reading. Jaspreet Kaur, you're awesome. All right, um, here we go. So read with me. The sinking of the Titanic. Because there was no international group which monitored icebergs in 1912, it was the sole responsibility of the to make sure there were no icebergs in the ship's path. The chief reason iceberg wasn't detected was the of the sea that night. Because of this, there were no waves crashing against the iceberg, making it difficult to spot. The captain swerved, but the iceberg scraped the side of the ship, ripping the of the ship. Things should have been fine, nevertheless, but the water that uh, the but the water tight compartments were poorly designed. And once the water was in a few compartments, it was able to in all the others. This was a major engineering defect, which resulted in the eventual sinking. All right. OK, let's keep going. Short answer completion. 
Choose no more than two words from the passage for each answer. Write your own answers in boxes 10 to 13. Again, this is all in the passage. This is short answer uh, sentence or statement completion. Make sure to read it and focus, students. Focus. I see a couple of you are having a little bit of trouble focusing. Focus. All right. Number 10. To avoid a Titanic-like disaster in the future, something or someone formed the International Ice Patrol, IIP. The IIP's goal is to track the relevant data and something, it's a noun, of icebergs. Number 12, the Ca Canadian Space Agency bounces something off the water to measure iceberg movement. This data renders large-scale maritime disasters mm, something. Okay, so far, so good. We have a clear idea of what's going on. Now we go back and we read the passage. You have lots of time to read the passage, okay? Compared to the speed at which an average grade 12 Canadian American reads, you have lots of time to read the passage. It would take an 18 year old in the US or Canada who's a native English speaker to read and understand this in about four minutes, four to five minutes. You can spend up to nine, 10 minutes reading the passage. So at 50% the rate of a native speaker, okay? And if you understand about 60, 70%, you should be able to get a band seven, all right? Okay, uh, so let's do this. Let's read body paragraph one. Read with me. Mountains of ice. The word iceberg derives from the Dutch word iceberg, meaning ice mountain. Icebergs are sections of glaciers that have broken off during the warmer summer months and float freely in open water. Icebergs are typically found in open water predominantly around Greenland and Antarctica. The characteristics of icebergs, their historical impact, and the methods we employ today to monitor them are important topics. Woohoo! All right. Now, you've just read this paragraph. Here's a good question for you. What did you see when and after you read paragraph A, the introduction. So what did you see, students? What did you visualize? Okay, you read that. We talked about visualizing, seeing the information. What did you actually see? So what did you picture? Muftana says, I didn't understand. In that case, Muftana, just read it again. Use a dictionary. You have to build up your grammar and vocabulary if you don't understand any part of the information. If you understand less than 60% students of a paragraph, you need to focus on learning more words and grammar in English. Okay? Um, so somebody said, I saw an iceberg floating from Denmark. Mm-hmm. Mohammed Nasser says, I see a huge ice cube floating during the summer month. Not bad. Rajveer says, I see an iceberg floating in the sea. Okay. Here's a couple of really cool tips for effective visualization. Okay. Number one, see clear pictures in your head. to better understand. Number two, include yourself in the picture. Be a part of it. To remember more. And number three, make the image 
or make the video in your mind interesting to remember longer, okay? This is super important for visualizing, understanding, and using information effectively, okay? So see clear pictures in your head to better understand. Include yourself in the picture, be a part of it to remember more, and make the video in your head, the pictures that you're seeing, uh, interesting in some way. The brain loves interesting information. I think that's why everybody loves those cat videos on YouTube, because like, hey, that's interesting. Look what that cat's doing, okay? So I'll tell you what I saw, and then let's see if you agree that this works really well. So what I saw is an iceberg, okay? I was actually standing on this iceberg. I was riding it, woohoo, okay? And I was wearing that kind of an interesting looking uh, Dutch boat shaped hat with my Dutch shoes, okay? because I named this object Eastberg, coming from the Dutch word. And of course it was a uh, sunny summer month. So I was wearing shorts, my swimming shorts, ready to go for a dip. And I'm riding this iceberg and I'm having a bit of fun, okay? Thinking about its history, thinking about how I can follow my friendly little icebergs in the ocean. So that's what I saw, okay? I included myself. I didn't just watch it from far away. It should not be like a television set, okay? That's why you don't remember the shows that you watch on TV because the mind is disconnected, okay? It's too far, all right? So uh, Shuja says, that, ha ha, that's some imagination, sir. Absolutely. Good imagination, good visualization is key to success, not just in the aisles, but in your work, in your business, and in life. Uh, successful people will often tell you that they are very good at visualization if you ask them, okay? All right, so include yourself, visualize, see it clearly, all right? So that's what we saw, or that's what you should have seen in body paragraph one. Okay, uh, let's keep going. Next paragraph. The reason icebergs exist is because of the difference between the density of ice and the density of salt water. The density of ice is approximately 920 kilograms per cubic meter, while the density of salt water is approximately 1,025 kilograms per cubic meter. Because ice is less dense than water, it floats. However, because the difference in densities is so small, only about 10% of the iceberg is visible above the ocean surface. The rest of the iceberg hides below the water. This is the origin of the familiar expression, tip of the iceberg used to describe a situation where only part of the problem is noticeable. What did you see? So again, I ask you, you just read this paragraph. What did you see? While you're writing that, I'll tell you what I saw. Okay. So what I saw is uh, this time I see this uh, ooh, massive iceberg. Okay. This is just 10%. This is 90%, okay? And uh, I'm below the water and I'm wearing a scuba mask, okay? Or maybe scuba gear, all right, with fins. And there I am swimming away and I'm like, oh, wow, that's really cool. So I'm swimming underwater and I'm looking at this massive uh, piece of ice and I'm thinking it's because the water is salty, okay? There's salt in the water. So this iceberg gets to float around. Maybe there's, in my visualization, even little fishes 
swimming around under the ocean, all right? Harjinder is asking, what's happening? We're reading a passage, and I'm showing students the importance of visualizing and how to visualize, okay? All right. Anshal says, I'm like a fish. I'm underwater, and I can breathe. Uh, Anshal, that's great because it's unique. That will help you hold that information, okay? So that's really good. Okay, nice. All right. Let's keep moving along. And uh, by the way, students, um, if you're good, or even if you're not good at uh, these kinds of quick little drawings, you can do this when you read. Make visual images to help you interpret and learn, and that will actually help you learn the English as well, okay? Again, remember, the mind is like a spider web. It connects information. So this can help you, okay? Uh, Karan is asking, is this a general um, version or IELTS module? You can use this, of course, for general as well, these strategies. So here we go. Let's keep going. Icebergs range in height from one meter all the way up to over 75 meters above sea level. The height measures the visible portion of the iceberg. The tallest icebergs may have a total height of over 650 meters, including their underwater portion. The largest ever recorded was 168 meters above the water, meaning the entire height of this floater was likely greater than 1,500 meters. For reference, that is twice the height of most skyscrapers, indeed, that is an ice mountain floating in the water. Again, ask yourself what you saw. For me, what I saw is an iceberg like this floating around. And there's an actual skyscraper okay, on the iceberg. So it's so big that it's as big as a skyscraper. So I can see that and I'm still hanging out, right? I'm always included in the image, okay? Always included in the image. So make sure to participate. Okay, let's keep going. So what I'm showing you right now is that you can move at a pretty good pace even when you're practicing at home using these strategies. Keep reading with me. Here we go. Different sized icebergs have different name classifications. The smallest icebergs all car, are, are called brash ice. The next category up in size is called growlers, and the ones after that are called bergy bits. For whatever reason, after those three classes, the people in charge of naming the icebergs got a little less creative. The next classes simply range from small to very large. Icebergs can be massive objects. Very large icebergs can weigh more than 200,000 tons. The largest iceberg ever recorded was over 30,000 square kilometers in area. Again, for reference, that is approximately the size of the country of Belgium. Oh, wow. Okay. So Belgium, it's a decent sized little country. And so this iceberg was as big as a country. What do I see here? I see a massive iceberg. Okay. Floating in the water. I'm standing on it. I found it. I maybe tied my boat to it. Okay. And uh, it's basically a country. So I have my own country. It's called Adrian Land. I'm going to do a square instead of an anarchy sign. Um, I have my own country. It's an iceberg, at least until it melts. Okay, So unfortunately, my country will melt away. But for a short time, I have my own floating country with my own flag. Maybe I'll build a couple little houses on it, things like that. Keep some animals there until it melts away. OK, so I'm still visualizing. That's happening very, very quickly. Okay, when you practice visualization, it happens fast. Okay, it happens fast. 
All right. Let's keep going. The most famous iceberg in history is undoubtedly the one which eventually sunk the English ship Titanic off the coast of Newfoundland in 1912. At that point in time, there was no central group which monitored iceberg activity. Ships relied on lookouts to spot the iceberg. For the Titanic, the unfortunate attitude was that any iceberg big enough to do damage to the ship would be seen in time. This attitude, of course, was catastrophically wrong. The main reason it failed was the remarkable calmness of the water that ill fated night. The easiest way to spot an iceberg from afar is to see waves crashing up against it. But on the night the Titanic sank, there were no such helpful waves. For all intents and purposes, the iceberg was invisible until it was too late. The captain swerved at the last minute, but as the side of the ship scraped across the iceberg, the hull of the ocean liner tore open. Things still may have been fine had it not been for the poorly designed watertight compartments. It turns out that when too many compartments were affected, the water was simply able to spill over to all the other compartments. This was an engineering defect that contributed to Titanic sinking. All right, so here clearly this is a big paragraph about the Titanic. And I remember the summary completion question, and I know that it's coming from this paragraph, okay? Lots of visualization there, clearly. All right. After the disaster of the Titanic, maritime authorities realized that a system needed to be put into place to monitor icebergs so that such a catastrophe would not be repeated. By 1914, the International Ice Patrol, IIP, was formed. Their purpose was to track all of the relevant meteorological and oceanographical data and to chart the movement of all major icebergs. Today, technology is used to track iceberg data. The Canadian Space Agency has multiple radar satellites which send microwaves off the ocean surface and record the reflection to track the movement of icebergs. Maritime vessels have access to this information in real time, which allows them to know exactly where any lo local icebergs are at any moment, meaning that a repeat of the Titanic disaster is virtually impossible. Okay, again, lots of visualization. So you can uh, picture uh, the microwaves being fired onto the ocean surface and reflecting, okay? All right, so we've done a good job. Now we're ready to answer some questions. Here's the yes, no, not given, or true, false, not given questions we talked about earlier. Students, this is what you do for yes, no, not given, true, false, not given. So point number three for strategy. First, figure out if it is given or not given. Okay, that's your first mission. So figure out if it's given or if it's not given. by asking by asking is this important for the passage if it is important then likely the information is given okay so here we go. Let's jump back and I'll show you this, okay? So here we go. Icebergs are sections of glaciers that have broken off in the winter months. Is it important to know what icebergs are? So according to this statement, it's describing what icebergs are. Is it important to know 
what icebergs are for this topic? The clear answer here is yes. Okay. So it must be given. Okay. So that's what I was figuring out if it's given or not. Okay. So here I know that it's given. Okay. After after I realize the information must be given, I can figure out if it is true or false. Yes or no. Okay. So here I figured out that it's given. And then I read the sentence again very carefully. Okay. So read the sentence twice, once to figure out if it's given or not. And the second time, figure out if it's true or false. So icebergs are sections of glaciers that have broken off in the winter months. Is it yes or is it no? Is it true or is it false? Is it true that icebergs are sections of glaciers that have broken off in the winter months? Nagam says, no, it's not. Why not? So why is it no? Yes, that's right, Yura, because of winter months. It's not winter months, it's summer months. Right? So the answer is no. It's a little bit tricky, 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 but it's no. And remember, students, if it's yes, no, not given, you have to write no. If you write false, you'll get it wrong. Okay? So don't write false. Okay? So um, it's a really good idea to read the true, false, not given, or yes, no, not given questions twice so you do not get tricked by little discrepancies like um, summer versus winter or past versus present tense or plural versus singular. Okay, so careful with these kinds of um, discrepancies. Discrepancies means differences where the content in the passage, the only difference is using the past tense of a verb instead of the present tense, which changes it from a yes to a no, okay? So be really careful with that. So it's a really good idea uh, to read these questions twice, okay? It's highly, highly, highly advisable, okay? Read them twice. Okay, let's keep going with this same strategy in mind, okay? Here we go. Uh, icebergs exist because of the different densities of ice and salt water. Is this information important? Is that information important for this? So is it important to know why icebergs exist? for the passage talking about mountains of ice. Remember, students, this is passage one. It's supposed to be a little bit easier. Yes, it's absolutely important. So it's given, right? So we know that it's given. And now comes our second read. Icebergs exist because of the different densities of ice and salt water. Is that true or false? Is it true that this is the reason that they exist? Yes, it is. And I can see many of you are thinking, yes, it's given. It must be, right? We talked about that. Remember my scuba diving in the salt, salt water, right? Okay, number three. 90% of the iceberg is hidden below the water. Is it important to know 
the proportion or how much of an iceberg hides under the water. Number three, is that important? Yeah, absolutely. So it's given. So then I read it again. 90% of the iceberg is hidden or hides below the water. Is that true? Yeah, because Izmir says the passage told us that only 10% is above the water, which makes this true. So it's yes. Very good, Izmir. Yeah, that was the paraphrase. 10% is above the water. Okay. <clears throat> Four, the name classifications of icebergs derive from the Dutch language. Okay, is it important for this passage to know where the name classifications of icebergs come from? Is that important to know? For number four. Is that important to know where the name classifications come from for icebergs? No, it's not. So the answer in this case is not given. Okay. Remember, these questions get more and more difficult as you go along. Okay. The word iceberg comes from Dutch. But the name classifications of icebergs, it doesn't tell us that, okay? Remember, students, this is where visualization would have really helped you. Remember that first paragraph? Let's just jump back to it. The word iceberg derives from the Dutch word isberg, meaning ice mountain. Aha, remember my picture of my Dutch hat with my Dutch shoes standing on top of the iceberg? The iceberg itself comes from my language, but not the name classifications. The name classifications is here. Different sized icebergs have different name classifications. The smallest icebergs are called brash ice, but it doesn't tell us what language or which nationality these come from. It's too much detail. It's not important. If you visualized and you read carefully the yes, no, not given question, then you can figure out that the answer is not given because you should always, and this is very important students, you should always ask the full question. So the full question is not just, is this important? Okay, this is a very important tip that I'm giving you right now. So is this important? This is not enough. Is that clear, what I'm telling you right now? So just asking, is this important, is not enough. You have to ask the full question. Is it important to know where the name classifications of icebergs are derived from, from Dutch language or other languages? And then your brain will go, wait, wait a second. Maybe the name iceberg, yes, but the name classifications, that's way too much. Okay, so you should always ask the is it important as a full question. Does that make sense? Okay. Really important tip. It's where a lot of students make a mistake is they don't ask it and their brain just grabs only a piece of the question. Okay? So ask the full question. Ask the full question. Right? It's very, very important. All right, last one. Uh, some icebergs can be the size of a country. Is it important to know how big icebergs can be and whether or not they can be the size of a country? Yes, absolutely. Is it true that icebergs can be the size of a country? Hemant, Simona, Rajvir, and everybody agrees that yes. Remember my drawing of the country? So it's yes. Okay, so the correct answers are no, yes, yes, not given, and 
Yes. All right. Uh, Kiran, it wasn't uh, 1,500 meters high. That was different information, Kiran. It was 30,000 square kilometers, okay? The size of the country of Belgium, right? Okay, good, 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 good. Yes, no, not given questions are actually one of the easiest question types when you use the correct strategy, okay? Because logic can really help to figure that out. Okay, uh, let's go to the next one. So here was the sinking of the Titanic, um, second to last paragraph. Okay, second to last paragraph. Uh, nice gaming, number four was not given. Not no, it was not given. Okay, um, here we go. So let's do this. Uh, the sinking of the Titanic. Because there was no international group which monitored icebergs in 1912, it was the sole responsibility of the someone to make sure there were no icebergs. Who? Well, I don't remember that, but I remember visualizing this in the second to last paragraph. So here I have the information. So who was in charge of uh, making sure they can see the iceberg? The captain? Not the captain, Hamant. It wasn't the captain, although I'm sure the captain should pay attention as well. But whose responsibility? Can somebody tell me, looking at the paragraph? Whose responsibility was it to spot the iceberg? That's right, Pooza. Very good. The lookout. Okay, the lookout. Uh, for those of you who don't know this word, uh, when you have a boat... Okay, here you have a ship. And then, of course, boats have these very high points. It's actually called a crow's nest, like the bird, the crow's nest. And then you have a person in there who is um, looking. Okay, this person is called the lookout. Okay, and this basket that's found on top of most big ships is called a crow's nest. Okay, crow's nest. All right. So the captain's here, right? The captain can't really see as much as the lookout. Okay. All right. So the first one is lookout. It was the lookout's responsibility to see it. All right. Okay. You really should only be searching for about 20% of the answers. Okay. So responsibility of the lookout or the lookouts, both are okay, to make sure there were no icebergs in the ship's path. The chief reason the iceberg wasn't detected was the something. What was the main reason of the sea? So when you see of the sea, that means this word is the condition of the sea. So what's the correct answer for number seven? What condition was the sea in? The reason that the iceberg wasn't detected. Very good, Aisha. Very good, Buhumi. It's the calmness, calmness. Yeah, so the sea was calm. There were no waves. So the calmness. C-A-L-M-N-E-S-S, -S, calmness, calmness of the sea. That's right. Okay. Ironic, isn't it? We would think that in a calm ocean, we're safer, but not in this case. All right. Um, let's keep going. It was not a stormy night. Because of this, there were no waves. So here's some more help. Because of this, there were no waves crashing against the iceberg, making it difficult to spot. The captain swerved, but the iceberg scraped the side of the ship, ripping the something of the ship. Now, if you know this word, you'll figure it out. If not, you'll have to search for it. But it's this part of the ship. So when you have a boat, okay, it's, it's a cruise ship or something, uh, this part of the ship. 
So does anybody know what this part of the ship is called? Michael Fenn and Hamant all say it's the hull, the hull of the ship. That's right. Yeah, it's called the hull. Not hall, so not H-A-L-L, but H-U-L-L. Take note of that U. Okay, so think about the word hallway or hall, H-A-L-L, but in the water, when it's part of the boat, it's the hull of the ship as the H-U-L-L of the ship. Okay. All right, things should have been fine nevertheless, but the watertight compartments were poorly designed. And once the water was in a few compartments, it was able to. Now, this is a verb, okay? Because you have to here, so you know that it's going to be an infinitive, and it's going to be a verb. What is the verb for water moving from one place into the other? What do we say? If I have one container here and I can... Yeah, that's right, Michael Fan. Very good. Spill. The water spills from one into the other. It's spill, spill. So the water was able to spill into all the others. This was a major engineering defect which resulted in the eventual sinking. And I see a lot of students now figuring out the word spill. Very good. Okay. All right, students, the last few questions, 10, 11, 12, 13, I will leave these ones for you for homework. You can see it at the end of the video a little bit later. Uh, send me your answers and I will send you the answer key. Read, watch the lesson again. A lot of tips and strategies in this lesson, students. So do these last four questions on your own. I will share my email with you here in just a moment so you know where to send it to. And I'll send you the answer key. Okay? So you can send your answers to adrian at aehelp.com. For lots more practice exams, strategies, HD videos with me and other examiners and IELTS experts trained in psychology for education, Check out our premium packages, aehelp.com for academic IELTS and gieltshelp.com for general. You're very, very welcome, Ruslan. Great participation today, students. Remember, your brain is the most amazing supercomputer in the known human universe. Respect it, love it, use it, train it. You can do whatever you set your mind to doing. IELTS is just one part of that. Much love from the heart of Europe. Bye for now. Hopefully I'll see you tomorrow.